Hello, beloved. I'm Stephanie and welcome back to the Unity Garden Kitchen. I want to encourage you today to think about how you can go about preserving food. Right now we, in 5B, we are in full swing with food production. So this is harvest time. We're getting squash, eggplant, tomatoes, onions, garlic, all kinds of wonderful foods. And I want you to think about how you can preserve them. Now, you may have a backyard garden or a community garden. If you're not able to garden at home or you don't have a local community garden that you're involved in, don't feel like you can't preserve food. You can purchase food to preserve and there's no shame in that. So you could go to a local farmer's market, you could go to a farm stand, Near me, we have a produce auction, and I'm really excited to check that out. It's in Amish country, so you could go to a local produce auction, or if you have to, as a last resort, go to the grocery store. Go to the grocery store, if you can buy organic, buy organic, and preserve what you have for seasons when the fresh fruits and veggies are not available. So I was gifted this beautiful squash, what a blessing, and I just purchased for $10 off Facebook Marketplace a food dehydrator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna preserve this squash by cutting it up in slices, putting it in my food dehydrator, I'm gonna let it dehydrate. It will probably take one to two days, probably two days with the humidity and rain we've been getting. And then I will store it in a glass jar and I'll have it in the winter for soups or stir fries or zucchini bread, anything that I want to make. So if you have zucchini, either in abundance again from your garden, I've heard that there's a, an unofficial holiday called sneak a zucchini on your neighbor's porch day. Um, and I also saw a meme going around social media that said, lock your car doors because people are sneaking their zucchinis in this time of year. So if you are blessed in your garden or your neighbor's garden, or as I said, however you can get a hold of some squash, I want to encourage you to preserve it. And it can be as easy as a $10 investment on Facebook Marketplace because again, that's how I, much I paid for my food dehydrator. So I'm just gonna slice this up. probably could have used a sharper knife. This is kind of my go-to kitchen knife. It's my everything knife. Take your time and be careful. I'm trying to get them the same width, but we're not being very successful at that. So just do your best. Okay, I have my zucchini all sliced up. I'm gonna grab the bottom tray of my food dehydrator and I'm going to start putting the slices on. Fits perfectly, that was good luck. Okay, I plugged my food dehydrator in, I put the first layer down, and I'm gonna move on to the second layer. Okay, all of my trays are full. I'm going to put the cover on and leave it for about two days and check it to see if it's dry. Now, food dehydrators use very little electricity, so they're generally considered safe to run 24 hours a day, even if you're not home or while you're sleeping, I guess similar to how you might leave a light on. 
again in one to two days maybe a little bit longer depending on the humidity and heat when those are dry we will put them in a glass jar the lid on tight and store in a cool dark place like a cupboard in your kitchen and have it for soups and stir fries and zucchini bread and however else you might want to use your zucchini when it's not in season this winter it has been a very unseasonably cool and wet summer in upstate New York, zone 5B. So most of our tomatoes are not happy. I don't know how long my indeterminates are gonna continue to produce. And I do at this point have more than I can eat at one time. They're not lasting very long because they're so waterlogged. So I want to make sure to preserve these. I have collected two trays of tomatoes, all different sizes. The cherry tomatoes I'm going to leave whole, the salad tomatoes I'll cut in half, and the slicer tomatoes I'll probably cut into four, five, even six pieces. The good thing is that I do have a variety of different types of tomatoes. Whenever you're using all of one thing, so you're making an apple pie, it's all apples, you're making a tomato sauce, it's all tomatoes. You want to, if you can, use a variety because using a variety is going to give you more flavors. So it's going to give a more complex flavor. It will taste even more delicious. Yellow tomatoes are lower in acid, so that gives them a different flavor. Um, and I do have a variety of types. So I'm going to leave the tomatoes that are really tiny whole I'm going to slice the middle size in half and I'm gonna put the slicers into as many pieces as I need to so that everything is approximately the same size. Okay, I have cut up my larger tomatoes. I have taken out any spots or core that was left over near the stem. And I'm going to sprinkle it with a little bit of salt. Salt is also something that's used as a preservative. and I'm gonna drizzle it with some olive oil. And now that my tomatoes are sliced, salted, and oiled, I'm going to put them in an oven that has been preheated to 400 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes. While my tomatoes are in the oven, I am going to clean and chop some onions and garlic. Okay, beloved. So after about 20 minutes, I turned my oven up to 425 for the last 10 minutes. And while I was doing that, I chopped my onions. I got these at the green market, the Schenectady Green Market and the community garden. And this beautiful garlic, which is from our community garden, Schenectady Urban Farms. And from my garden, I got some basil and some oregano into a clean jar. I'm going to put 
my herbs and spices. And if you don't like these or you don't have these, you don't have to use them. You could use parsley. You could use thyme. So you're gonna put your spices in. Push everything down to the bottom. And then we're gonna get our roasted tomatoes. Okay, after about a half an hour in the oven, these roasted tomatoes look delicious. They smell amazing. And remember, all we added was a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of salt. And now we're just gonna spoon them into the jar. Okay, once you have your tomatoes filling the jar, you're going to top it with olive oil. And it's the olive oil that's going to make sure that oxygen doesn't get to the fruit, the tomatoes, which will make it mold and spoil. So whenever you pull out the tomatoes to use, you can press them down and make sure that they're still covered in olive oil because it's the olive oil that you want to keep the oxygen away from your food while it's in the fridge. Now remember, this is not canned, so you still wanna keep it in the fridge, but these fresh roasted tomatoes are now ready to pull out anytime I wanna make a soup, a stew, a casserole, a stir fry, some chili, rice and beans, even topping a pizza. If for some reason you found that the fruit wasn't staying under the oil, you can always add more oil as you're eating the tomatoes. And if for some reason you don't have enough tomatoes to fill your jar, you can always do half a jar at a time. Just make sure it's covered with oil and make sure that you're continuing to add oil as you add the tomatoes so that it's always being covered and kept safe from the air. Now, when I have finished these tomatoes, I am not gonna throw anything away. I'm gonna use the garlic, I'm gonna use the onions, I'm gonna use the basil, and I'm sure gonna use this delicious olive oil that's going to be infused with all of these flavors. It would be a great cooking oil, it would be a great salad oil, it would probably even be amazing in a bread, like if an herb de Provence or something like that. Not a sweet bread, but something savory. So make sure that you don't throw anything away. Make sure that you use every little bit that you can. So I wanna encourage you to learn different methods of preserving your food, especially if you live in a cooler climate like me, but again, with our supply chain being so fragile and our food system being so broken, anytime you can preserve your own fresh food, it's a good thing. So dehydrating and roasting and covering in oil and putting in the fridge are two great methods to keep your fresh food longer. Thank you so much for joining me in the Unity Kitchen. I would love to know what you're preserving today. I am sending you love, light, peace, blessings, and joy. Please take care of yourself and take care of each other.